Today, in this video, we are going to learn about the most important topic of chemistry called as the modern periodic table. Somewhere in the beginning of 18th century, there were a handful of elements. And these elements were classified into two groups, metals and non-metals, depending upon their properties such as luster, ductility and malleability. In course of time, many more new elements were discovered and there were some elements showing some properties of metals and some properties of non-metals. They were called as metalloids. Examples of metalloids are silicon, germanium, arsenic. As science progressed, more and more elements were discovered. But when more elements were discovered, scientists found that there were some dissimilarities among metals also and some dissimilarities among non-metals also. For example, sodium and copper both are metals. But sodium is a soft metal easily cut with a knife. While copper is harder, it cannot be easily cut with a knife. Sodium reacts much more vigorously with water. While copper does not react with water. Scientists couldn't understand why this difference was and therefore they felt the need of further classifying the elements on some other properties. The biggest question was how to classify these elements and the question was answered in 1808 when John Dalton gave his atomic theory. According to atomic theory, atomic mass is the fundamental property of an element. Now, what is atomic mass? Now, we know atom is made up of subatomic particles such as protons, neutrons and electrons. And we also know the total mass of electrons is always negligible. So, atomic mass is the total mass of protons and neutrons together present in the nucleus of an atom. And this was considered as a fundamental property. And now, scientists started classifying the elements on the basis of their atomic mass. The first scientist to classify the element on the basis of atomic mass was Daberina. During his time, there were nearly 30 elements. So, he collected all the elements and tried to classify the elements on the basis of atomic mass. And he put forward a law called as Daberina's law of triads. But the fact was, he could not classify all the elements known as his time in this law of triads. And therefore, this law failed. Then came the next scientist, Newlands. He also thought that atomic mass is the fundamental property of an element and he also classified the elements on the basis of atomic mass. During his time, there were 56 elements. But once again, he could not classify all the elements on the basis of atomic mass in a stable called as Newland's octave. So that also failed. Then came the next scientist, Mandelief. During his time, there were nearly 63 elements. So he also classified the elements on the basis of their atomic mass. But at the same time, he also considered their properties. And he could arrange most of the elements during his time. But due to few drawbacks, his table also failed. And then in 1913, another scientist called as Henry Moseley showed that atomic number is the more fundamental property of an element rather than its atomic mass. And he classified the elements on the basis of atomic number in a tabular form and this is called as the modern periodic table.